Yeah, okay. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, uh, everybody. I'd like to uh, introduce you to you uh, my friend, uh, Martin Jew. Uh, Martin is uh, K5FLU, and Martin is the founder of MFJ Enterprises, and uh, there's a lot of companies within the MFJ Enterprises, uh, High Gain, uh, Vectronics, uh, Mirage, um, uh, Cushcraft. Cushcraft uh, what else? Uh, uh, well, I'm missing something. Uh, uh, Maritron. Maritron, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Maritron. So, uh, anyway, uh, we're glad we caught you. I know uh, a lot of times we don't catch you. You fly in here and you fly out of here real fast and you sneak in and out and we don't see you, Martin. Uh, well, I'm glad I... Uh, got a chance to stay a little bit longer this time and do a little bit more visiting. Uh, been a well, great ham fest. It, it, it really has. And, and Martin, we really appreciate uh, you guys supporting our broadcast. Uh, you guys give us some prizes for every uh, broadcast that we do live. And we've, uh, I think we've got about 60 of your prizes today. We've got a few more. You know, we're going to be giving the rest of them out tomorrow. And uh, uh, okay. we're really thankful about that. I know all our viewers uh, uh, like these nice prizes and i tell you something that's gone over really well your mfj speaker even though those speakers okay. are small mm -hmm. those things sound good and there's a lot of people use it like those well those speakers are good and and that you're right they're very popular and and we just appreciate all the uh <coughs> work and the time and effort that you've devoted to uh showing people around the world what uh the ham fest uh, all over the country is about we that's a uh, that's a very good thing that you do for us, Tom. Well, thanks. And, you know, hey, we really enjoyed We were down at your 40th anniversary down in uh, Starkville uh, back in August. October. October. October, October. yeah. That was, uh, that was a good uh, deal. We got to meet all your people and see all your your different uh, uh, departments and things. And it was really great. Hey, Martin, let's, let's talk a little about your story, man. Uh, you, 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 you grew up uh, in a grocery store. and tell, tell us how you got started in electronics and engineering and all that. Okay. Um, well, you're right. I grew up in the uh, Mississippi Delta. Um, uh, in the Mississippi Delta from about Memphis down to about Vicksburg along the Mississippi River, and out to about 60 mile, miles or so uh, uh, to the east around uh, Greenwood, uh, there was a uh, settlement of Chinese that came uh, after, um, in the late um, 1850s, 1860s, that settled down there. Um, in fact, uh, my great-grandfather helped build the Transcontinental Railroad. So we've been there for a few generations. And all, all the Chinese there had these little grocery stores, and uh, but that's how we grew up in the in the business, and and um, all of all of our friends and family members were in business, and when I was uh, in the um, uh, <coughs> I was a Cub Scout when I was eight years old, built the Crystal Radio, uh, never could get it to work, but I built one and. That's what got me interested in radio, and when I was a teenager back in 1960 in high school, I got a ham radio license and got a degree in electrical engineering at Mississippi State University and uh, went to Georgia Tech for a master and went back home with my brand-new master's degree and ran the grocery store for about six months, but I learned... I learned what a business was about, and I was going to go into some kind of business because that's how I grew up and, and combined it with ham radio because it was a hobby for me uh, since I was a kid. And that uh, uh, was the reason why I started uh, making products in the ham radio field. And um, <clears throat> the first product was a, um active filter um Back in the days when operational amplifiers were very high, very new technology, and brought a kit for Morse code, uh, it's a uh, audio filter that sold for nine dollars and ninety-five cents. <clears throat> and I was building all these products myself, and uh, I had to eat, so I was teaching uh, some uh, uh, engineering courses in the uh, uh, electrical engineering school. <clears throat> and I used to take these bags of parts to my class and uh, ask if there were any students that wanted to put 
these things together for 25 cents a piece. Well, that was our first uh, production line. And we just started adding a few products uh, a little bit at a time until uh, we had a, enough products to build where I could finally leave uh, Mississippi State uh, teaching the courses there. And we had about 30 employees when I left. Well, that's, that's good. Now, now Martin, when you... Uh when you got bigger, when you when you uh, s- stopped paying these students to build your uh, thing, you went a little. You, I guess you got a little bigger now. Tell me a story about the hotel. You started in a hotel room, I think, and didn't they kick you out of the hotel? Well, yeah. Uh, the uh, first place I rented was a uh, hotel room in downtown Starkville. It was pretty run down back then, and I was paying uh, sixteen dollars a month. And that's fifty cents a day, and. Um, uh, but I was doing everything uh, myself at that time, uh, uh, etching the PC board uh, in a uh, Pyrex uh, dish over a hot plate and drilling all the hose and stuffing the boards and soldering it and taking the orders and and uh, shipping it out. And um, I was making so much racket and smelling up the place that the uh, manager ran me off. <laughs> Well, did, did you offer to pay him more rent, maybe a buck a day or something like that? He just kicked you out, huh? He didn't, he didn't want you there? Well, I think what happened was I think the manager was renting this room out on the side because it was in such bad shape he uh, couldn't rent it to anyone else, and I think he might have been just kind of pocketing the money. And it ah, didn't. Yeah. I see. I see. All right, so so that might have been good for you. You got, you got thrown out of the hotel room, but then you, you every time you get bigger and bigger, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, then, uh, then I guess you moved into your next uh, uh, <coughs> office? Yeah, I think the next place we moved into was the back of a building where they had a small print shop. And he kind of subleased a little bit of his print shop to me. And um, after a while, I found out he was charging me more for rent than he was pay- paying for the whole place. <laughs> you know, so we went and found a trailer to move in, but later we moved back to it and rented the whole place out. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've really expanded over the years. You've really expanded MFJ Enterprises with all these other companies we talk about. You, I guess you bought some companies. You, you've developed some of the companies on your own. Uh, well, we talk did. Talk about that. Okay. Well, the original company was MFJ, and it was just... Uh, easier and faster and cheaper to um, go out and buy a company that had spent the last 25, 30 years building up a product line and a brand name and so, so we could get uh, instantly increased the business. So we went out and started looking for places that we could buy and ran them in places where they were, but it just was much easier for them to bring them down to Sartwell. And uh, we started adding some more manufacturing facilities and just kind of slowly built it up. Um, Some of these companies had been around for close to 50 years that were um, uh, getting ready to go out, but we brought them and built them back up and made them into viable companies. Now, you you hire a lot of students, don't you, from the, the college there? Or is that where you get a lot of your uh, employees, maybe? Well, well, actually, most of our employees are just the regular town people, but we like to hire students when, uh, whenever we can. And in the beginning, the students were a uh, lot more willing to, uh, to work than, uh, than they are nowadays. Uh, we do have some students, but very few of them. Well, you know, uh, a lot of people probably don't know this, but Ray Novak of uh, ICOM, he he uh, went to school and then I think his one of his first jobs was working for you uh, there at MFJ. Well, uh, th- that's true. And Ro- Ray Novak uh, runs the amateur radio division for ICOM, and his very first job was at MFJ. And then he um, he worked for about six years. Real go getter. I mean, he used to travel all the ham fest, and he would take the initiative of things like. If, they, uh, if there was something wrong with the truck, he would just crawl under the truck and start pulling wires out and, 
and try to get it fixed, but sometimes he wouldn't know which wires he pulled out. <laughs> so is there any good stories about him? Did he, did, he, did he mess you up any, or did he always come through and get it running? What He didn't, uh, I mean... <clears throat> Well, he, uh, I don't know if he wants me to talk too much well, about all the mess listening. ups. You know, he's not messing right now. <laughs> no, but, he's a good guy. But, you know, that's a tough job. I mean, I've listened to, you know, your, your guys. And you, 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 how many ham, ham fests do you go to a year a lot? Well, you know, at one time, we, were, we went to 45 ham fests a year. That's about one every week. But, but we have reduced it down to about 25. 25 a year, so about one every two weeks or so now. Okay. I mean, you can look at your booths here. I mean, you've got half the uh, the the vendor area here with all your different companies. It, it takes a lot to bring that stuff here and it, set it up. It takes several people at least eight hours to do a setup uh, uh, of of all the boots. I uh, think so, that so. How many people like for Dayton and maybe the same here? How many people would you take to Dayton to to run your your operation in Dayton? Oh, at Dayton we have about twenty five to twenty seven people, thirty people yeah. at Dayton. Yeah. Uh, to set it up and run okay. it and, and oh, maybe, it's, it's maybe a, a little less here on this one. I think on this one we have five or six or seven oh, okay. people here. Well, they're they're really jumping over there. I mean, they've been busy. I've been watching them. So, well, you know, we always take less people than uh, than you need than we need, yeah. and uh, it kind of motivates them to work a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I know we're going to have some questions in a minute. There's going to be probably a lot of people uh, that are viewing uh, this that will have questions. So, okay. guys, start getting your questions together. And we'll try to uh, uh, ask uh, Martin any questions. And Martin, another thing, a lot of your products are, are are ideas that other hams or other people may have, and they'll say, "Why don't you build a two meter amplifier or something?" And, and you guys will go out and work on that, and it'll actually become a product. Is that right? That's right. That's right. We we want to give our fellow hams what they want. You know, just tell us what you want, and we'll we'll make it for you. Uh, but the uh, best product ideas come from our uh, customers and. Just whoever uh, is using ham radio. <coughs> well, let's see if any is coming in. Are there any questions uh, coming in, Kathy, that you can see? Okay, I, I just I just told her a minute ago. So you guys start thinking about any questions you'd like to ask Martin here. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, it it uh, is a great uh, American story, you know. Well, and you you know I mean, in, in, in you were talking about your. Great! It was your great grandfather. Great grandfather over, that helped build a transcontinental railroad. So they railroad. came over. Did they come over to build the railroad? Or? Uh, yeah. Well, he came over to work. Uh-huh. Now, um, I, I think he went back to China. But my grandfather and my father were uh, all here, and okay. they all ran little grocery stores. In fact, my father, as I understand it, he died when I was six years old. <clears throat> but he used to set up these grocery stores in Mississippi and Arkansas and get them set up in those uh, uh, Chinese that came over to immigrate, he would get, turn the store over to them for them to make a living now. Well, that's, that's a cool story. Cool story. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I mean uh, Martin, I, I enjoyed uh, when I come visit your office. You've got a picture of the grocery store in there. I guess it's still there, right? It, yeah. It's a it, drawing that someone made. It's a made drawing, the, yeah. The, where you grew up in a grocery store and <laughs> I think you actually lived in the grocery store. Oh, yeah. No, this was a little tiny country grocery store. The store part was less than 1,000 square feet, and we lived in the back of the store. At one time, uh, there were uh, 11 of us that lived in the back of the store. When my father died, when I was six years old, my oldest sister, who's 22 years older than I am, came, uh, and her husband came to live with us and help us out. So at one time we had eleven of us living in the back of that store. Wow, that's uh, that's something. And, and, and again, but not to harp too much on the story, but it wasn't just a grocery store. Didn't they sell everything from oh, uh, oh, horse saddles oh, to everything? Oh I mean, yeah, this is old country store. Yeah, yeah, we sold everything. We sold uh, what we call colors, kerosene yeah. for lamps, and they didn't have electricity. A lot of places didn't have electricity. We sold these animal traps. We sold. Uh, uh, chicken feed, horse feed, potatoes. We cut meat, 
anything that a farmer would buy, we were selling. So, to me, I think that's where you got your business business experience. You helped run that that, that store, and that's where you got some experience on how to make a business work. Didn't you? Well, well, I did. I had got a degree in. Uh, at Mississippi State in electrical engineering, got a master's degree at Georgia Tech, but my the, the degree that really helped me more than anything else was the um, uh, um, the MGS uh, degree. That's the master's of grocery storing, which I got at the run in the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And that 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 school's down in Mississippi. Uh, down at, where, where down was in it? down in Hollandale, Mississippi. Hollandale, okay, very <laughs> good. Uh, I know some questions have started to come in there, and it can't, well, our, we can't get our tablet to connect, so Kathy's going to relay those messages uh, okay. to uh, questions to us. Any plans for a six meter kilowatt amplifier? Um. <coughs> The answer is still a secret, but the initials are Y-E-S. Okay, you heard that right here. <laughs> it's a secret, it's a secret, but the initials are Y-E-S. So don't tell anybody, don't, don't tell anybody what Martin just disclosed here. All right, what else we got? Are all products still made in the U.S.? Uh, all products still made in the U.S.? Well, uh over 90% of the products are made in the U.S. Now, there uh, are some products that things like the clocks and maybe the watches and the handheld microphones, those kind of products are, are made overseas. But um, just about all the products are, are made in the U.S. And you can tell the style of products that we make. I, I bet you there's probably not a ham, not many ham shacks in this country that doesn't have an MFJ product in it. I well, mean, you just got so many different products. Well, we how keep, many you got? Do you know? We have probably over 2,000 different uh, products and line items that's uh, in our catalog, and we we're working on that and try try to get a product in in all the ham shacks. <laughs> well, I know uh, I've got a bunch of them. Uh, I've got the, that new amplifier, and I hadn't had a chance to use it yet. But I've oh. got it. I've had it probably about six months. But oh, we we're going to be turning that thing on soon. Yeah, what, what else, Kathy? <laughs> multi band, multi mode HF radio. Well, we. Um, <clears throat> Act, you know what we really like to do are, are to make the accessories, and we'll let the uh, the big radio companies uh, take care of the uh, multi-band, multi-radios. You know we have some of the smaller single-band radios, but we like to make accessories. Okay. <laughs> uh, MFJ transceivers. Well, some of the smaller ones. Um, we uh, will continue and, and plan to build, but uh, not, nothing mainline like uh, all band, all mo type radios. Sometimes, sometimes the questions are rolling so fast it's hard to. to we're going to miss a lot of them here. I think. Okay. I understand. Uh, Legal limit remote antenna tuner. Well, well, we have one. It's the MFJ998, so. and it's been a very popular, uh, very well developed, very well tested, very good antenna tuner. MFJ99 T, MFJ998 RT, uh, designed to be uh, used outside and, and uh, weatherproof. Now, you called that model number off just like that. Do you know the model number of everything in there, of all your major products? Well, uh, I know the model number of most of them. I used to know the model number of all of our products. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you a test. Uh, what's the speak, comm speaker, communication speaker, MFJ what? Uh, shoot, I can't remember that. I think that is the... Mm. Starts with a two. Oh, yeah, 286, MFJ 286. There you go. You got that? <laughs> oh, man. 
Yeah, well, you've got, like you say, you got so many products, I don't see how you can remember all. What, no. else, uh, what else you got? Well, that, that's something that we're looking at. We, we haven't finalized anything yet. Uh, nothing finalized on the SDR? Uh, on S, yeah, software-defined yeah. radio. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to repeat the question because they probably don't know what you're answering. What's your best project or idea that you have built? Well, uh, I think it is the uh, SWR analyzer. Um, and I remember pretty clearly when I got that idea, uh, that was uh, on a Sunday afternoon when I was working in my uh, lab that's in my office in, in the old building. And uh, <clears throat> we have an antenna uh, bridge that I was trying to improve on. And all of a sudden, I got an idea that if we would just add an oscillator to a resistive bridge, we could have a handheld portable SWR analyzer, and that was the beginning of a uh, product that made putting antennas up much, much easier. Well, it's a neat little product, I'll tell you. I, I like it. Well, it, it's been a very good product, and that, that's probably the most copied product that uh, that we have. But, you know, I think your, uh, your Maritron amplifiers are very popular, too, you know. Well, you're right. You know, the idea behind the Ameritrine amplifier was to build something that uh, <coughs> us regular hams could afford and and be able to uh, put some power out. And when we brought out the uh, AL811 uh, amplifier that used 811 tubes at a very affordable price, uh, um, there were that's that amplifier there's probably more of those amplifiers being used in the world than any other amplifier oh yeah there are uh, any more kits in the future well yeah in fact we just brought out a uh, one of our um, manual antenna tuners and it's turning out to be a very popular kit it was just recently uh reviewed in the uh, latest issue of CQ magazine, and uh, and I think uh, 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 it's going to be on um, uh, uh, Amateur TV Logic. <coughs> um, uh, um, but it's, uh, it's in the style of the old Heath kits where there's uh, actual point-to-point -point wiring, um, uh, a Heathkit style uh, manual, and um, it's a very useful thing. It's an antenna tuner, uh, an antenna tuner that includes a uh, antenna switch in it. Uh, uh, it's got an SWR uh, watt meter in it, and it can handle uh, all uh, bands from uh, 160 through 10 meters, and uh, handles uh, up to 300 watts. But yeah, we're we're going to develop more kits. Will there be a full legal limit HFM like the ALS A full legal limit HF amp. Uh, um well uh, I, again is, uh, like, is that a solid state amp? Is that what you're talking about, I think? Mm hmm Yeah. It it's a solid state amp. Solid state yeah. amp, okay. Yeah. Uh well again uh that uh, is a secret, but again, the initials are YES, uh, full legal limit, all the way up through six meters. I, I don't know how we're, <laughs> that, we're, we're almost letting secrets slip today on, <laughs> on here. So, well, all right. What else we got? Well, I think we talked about it earlier. SDR equipment or add-ons. I think you've already addressed that, Martin. The answer is you're not going to be doing any SDR stuff well, right now, right? Well, we're looking at it. We just haven't finalized anything okay. yet. All right. Okay. Well, there'll be some more coming in here. Um, I, I had something uh, I was going to ask Martin, but I forgot it. So, um, oh, I know what it was. I, I know what it was. Uh, 
people can buy products directly from MFJ, or they can buy products from dealers. Mm-hmm. And you know, I don't know how the pricing works, but uh, but they have the option to buy directly from you or, or the dealers. You want to talk any about that or any differences or anything? Mm-hmm. Well, you're right. They can buy directly from us, but uh, 92% of our products are through dealers, and we like to uh, support all of our dealers. Now, not every dealer carry every one of our products, so we make them available uh, where they can buy it directly from us. Uh, um, generally, if you do get it from a dealer, um, they may sometimes give you a, uh, a uh, discount, um, but uh, we, don't, we don't like to compete with the dealer, so we have to... Um, uh, keep the price, uh, the, the list priced on it. Now, now you have uh, dealers in a lot of countries. How many countries are you? Are well, you, uh, we, yeah. have, we have distributors which buy the products and sell it to their own dealer networks, and then we have direct dealers. Uh, but uh, the uh, countries that we sell directly into uh, dealers and distributors, we have, we're in over 35 countries, and, but more country than that because these dis- di- distributors will sell them to dealers that are outside their countries too. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Somebody has a comment here. Tell Martin that. It's scrolling pretty fast. A great dealer in Portugal. Oh, well, well, well thank you. That's uh, yeah. We're we're proud of our dealer in Portugal. Thank you. Yeah. When are you gonna have your next big anniversary? You just had the fortieth. You gonna do a fiftieth or? Well, you know, it's it's so much work that uh, we have been doing those uh, every five years. So uh, we. Ha- Let's see, we had a 40th one, and so, you know, to, in a few more years, we'll have the 45th one. And uh, anyway, we, we plan to be around to do that. All right, and you invite everybody to those, don't you? Oh, I mean, everybody. It's, it's, uh, it's open for any ham uh, uh, or anywhere uh, to come to it. Where it's open, and, and we encourage and invite every ham in the world to come visit us. Now, one thing I noticed, Martin, is when, when a ham stops by your office, <laughs> it comes through Starkville, if he wants to see a tour of your facilities, you guys just give him a tour, right? You can walk in off the street, and uh, you get, they, you give them a red carpet service, man. Absolutely. Anybody who wants to come visit us and would like a tour, I mean, we are just more than happy to show them what we do and how we make their products and come through and, and sit down with me in my office, and i show you my collection of old radios that goes all the way back into the 40s. These are old uh, radios that I wish that I had when I was a kid that I just now am able to afford to buy, and I just put them up on a shelf and look at them. I, I've seen your collection. Uh, in fact, um, I saw the first receiver I ever had. It was a ham- uh, it was a, I think it was a Hammerlin. I don't remember what it was. It was a, it was a 80 through 6 meters Hammerlin receiver. Little gray, I think it was Hammerlin. Is it gray? Is that a gray? Uh, yeah, there's. Or, I had some Hammerlin. There's some National, like yeah. the NC60, or, or maybe the HRO50. Well, I, I have well, one you, of those. You had it there, and it brought back uh, uh, memories. You know, I like to say almost 50 years ago oh, when yeah. I when I had that, and yeah. there it is up on the shelf there. That yeah. might have been mine that you bought. Well, might have yeah. been, might have uh, been. Um, but you got a, quite a collection of radios there. Well, uh, I've been collecting them, and um, I just like to have, have them on the shelf, and I just sit back and look at them. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you don't have uh, any type of station set up, do you, at, at any, any of your offices, or do you? <clears throat> well, I have some radios that I can plug an antenna and plug power into it. I've got several of those and we do have some stations set up uh back in the 
uh, different areas that people can operate. Okay, question. MFJ 828, firmware update. Okay, I'm not sure what the latest revision of that is, but he, he, you can check, uh, just call us and talk to the uh, technical support department, and they can tell you uh, if there is one and, and what it is. Okay. Uh, what about a 222 right, come, here. Uh, come on over. Okay. Well, uh, what, what, what do you mean? What about it? They just say what uh, yeah. Oh, adventure radio. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I know we have one for two meters, and I think we might have worked at one for for a 220 megahertz, but we don't have one right now. Uh, your crew's walking away, uh, Martin. I was, yeah. was going to get him to stand up here yeah, behind come you. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come over on over here. here and get, 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 get behind <laughs> us here. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to everybody here. Yeah, man. yeah. Pass the microphone around. Yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, here's uh, yeah, Will. Okay. Take some more questions. Sure. Here, here's some of uh, Martin's crew right here. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> what's another question here real quick? TX, DX, 3000, Yezu, what, auto antenna tuner? 3000, <laughs> yeah, that's what they gave away today. Okay, well, we need to take a look at that. I'm, I'm sure we could come up with something. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, okay, hey, Steven, yeah, we got Steven back probably, here. I think it's probably a cable. Yeah. Oh, is it a cable? The auto, well, the auto tuner we already got, but oh, we just need to. We just need to come up with a cable. Probably. So, so okay, maybe they've already got it. It's just a cable. Uh, okay, so yeah, we'll check into it. It may, I mean, yeah, our tuners will work with uh, all the different radios. You just have to, just need a cable that goes from that particular radio to um, to the antenna tuner. If we don't have one, I'm sure we will be having one. Magnetic loop antenna okay. tuners. Well, that that project has been on the books uh, for a while, and we do intend to have a, a tuner that will automatic automatically tune the loop antennas. I mean, that's something that we need to go ahead and get done. Uh, okay. So, so Martin, who we got back here? We got we got Steve. I oh, see we Steve have Stephen Pan, now, now Stephen, our vice president. Stephen's your VP. I, I saw his office one day. I, he w didn't look like he was doing much work in there. <laughs> I do the least. I do the least work. But, but when you're vice president, you don't have to work a whole lot, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Stephen Pan, our vice president. He used to be one of my students, and uh, he started working for us. And uh, <clears throat> he, um, but I used to. Uh, he got a degree in electrical engineering, and he came by and, and asked if he could work for us. And I said, "Well, sure. You know, we got work for you. Just can't pay you very much." But <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but everything I gave him, he did, and, he, and pretty soon he was doing all kind of stuff. But was, so he became my vice president. That's cool. And Richard Stubbs behind me is um, uh, in charge of uh, all the customer service. Um, he is the guy that I called a complaint man. Yeah, Richard, Richard's a go-to guy. <laughs> he is a go-to guy. Yeah. Hey, everybody out there in Radio Land, you want me to sing you a song? Yeah, yeah. I, I caught him singing one day. Yeah. He filmed me singing one time. Yeah. And, and Tom Stone here uh, does all the customer service for uh, for the high gain and the uh, and the Cushcraft. Yeah, he uh, he gave us a great tour uh, of, of your antennas and stuff when we yeah, were there uh, a couple the, years uh, ago. YouTube tour. Yeah. Well, we yeah, can we'll do be that. Showing that tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll try to do that. Try to catch me. It, yeah. it, it gets real busy, but catch me. We'll make. Over, yeah, bring it. I'll bring it over if you can. That'll be be easiest. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else, uh, Kathy? Okay. All right. Um, 
Okay, they want a they want a linear amp for six meters, two meters, and uh, seventy centimeters. Okay, why can't anybody make an amp to cover all those? I guess it's too wide a frequency well, spread or something. Well, it is a pretty wide frequency range, but I don't know if um, you can't do it or not. But that sure sounds like that's something that we ought to be looking at. Yeah, Stephen, why don't y'all knock one of those out tomorrow? We're doing a six. Just add add uh, two yeah. meters and 440 on there, and you got it. Yeah. I I would start off with a big band switch in there, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What else? <laughs> Let's see. More options. They want more options on six meter antennas. Um. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what what that question is, but I think it may mean uh, adding uh, six meters or more antennas. Um, oh, or maybe different kinds of six yeah, meter antennas. Six kinds, yeah. yeah. Well, we've got several six types of six meters. Um, I think we've got. Um, uh, we may even have it now. A some plans for Moxon six meter. Uh, do y'all have a ring, uh, do you have a Ringo for six or not? Do they make it? Yeah, y'all have a Ringo yeah. for six on Cushcraft. There is a Moxon antennas for six. Okay, six and and how about the Squalo? We're bringing back the yeah, Cushcraft the Squalo, Squalo antenna. Uh, That's a horizontally polarized antenna for single sideband on uh, mobile. Six meters. We yeah. Got J poles. We yeah. got folded dipoles. We got we got a whole bunch of antennas for six meters. So and then most of our verticals also cover six meters. Mm -hmm. Okay, 600 watt version of the NFJ 993B, a 600 watt version. Well, we have the MFJ 994, which is a 600 watt version of that, <laughs> which, which works good. We, we've okay. also got the MFJ 998RT and 998, which is the 1500 watt versions of them. There you go. Sounds like it's uh, already there. Just I uh, just need to go out and buy it, right? Yeah, you yeah, the catalog. yeah. Oh yeah, well, it's ready. Okay. Ready if you. Do you have any engineers that work for MFJ? Do you have uh, your own engineers that work for uh, MFJ? Yeah, we have several engineers that do product development and other things. Yeah. <coughs> mhm. Mm okay. Uh, they're uh, mostly electrical engineers. Now, don't you have some engineers that work for you, not necessarily in Starkville, but maybe working from home or in some other state? Well, or well, we do. We have an engineer in um, in New Jersey, one in Georgia, one in New Hampshire, and one on the Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, that work for us uh, as full-time engineers. And yeah. then we have some in, some engineers that work in Starkville. More, more and more people are, are doing it now. I mean, even my job at, at FedEx, I had engineers that worked for me, and I let them move to Baton Rouge and other places, and we we, we, we could stay in contact so easily, and mm -hmm. I think the productivity is just as good, you know, with them working from mm -hmm. home. Well, okay. Yeah, are you going to retire? That's the question. Uh, okay, well, you know, people retire to do what they want to do, and I'm already doing what I want to do, so I've always been retired. <laughs> That's a good answer right there. Yeah. You just don't retire from doing the ads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, if he retired, maybe he'd come in a little late or, you know, something like that, you know. <laughs> a lot of talk. Yeah. All right, Qu well, questions, more questions here. You got the whole team together here, man. This is good. They're probably going to turn the lights out on us here in a minute. The ham fest finished about an hour ago. <laughs> uh, do, do, do you have a successor picked out? Well, I plan to be here forever. <laughs> all right, all right. He's going to be the grasshopper. Guys, we've really enjoyed uh, having you guys uh, with us on the broadcast here, and we recorded this. It's going to be playing on our uh, site, you okay. know, after, even after uh, 
uh, be great. Uh, after after the ham fest here. And uh, Martin, we're gonna have to get back down to Starkville and see your stuff again. Yeah, come I, on I by any time. That'd okay. be great. All right. Any last words? You, where are you guys going to dinner tonight? Anywhere? Anything picked out? Someplace. Uh, I don't know. Someplace. Oh. We need some foot medicine. Do you? Yeah. Oh. I think Mr. Julia needs some feet medicine. Yeah. Stay on your feet too yeah. much today. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you very much again for for coming by, and we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, bring it, uh, bring it over tomorrow, and we'll we'll talk about it, man. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh. Martin, thank you oh, very much. Thank you, Tom. Uh-huh. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good job, Tom. That's her blood sugar pill. That's.